We now understand that if you accept federal money, you also accept federal dependency and control. We've said this before regarding Alaska's Statehood Act. The people were unaware that the federal government is not permitted to own 60% of Alaska. It's permitted to own forts, arsenals, dockyards, other needful buildings, and the courts have been a willing agent in collectivizing and concentrating power in Washington, D.C., when really the genius of freedom is that you diffuse power, you localize power, and you let the people within their own societies, and believe me, I have a different society here in Alaska than East Texas, than they have in Connecticut, than they have in Southern California, than they have in Northern Minnesota. There's another question that sometimes comes up. Doesn't the president have to enforce all the laws? And the answer to that is found in Thomas Jefferson. When he became president in 1801, he knew that the Alien and Sedition Act was a very dangerous threat to freedom of speech and freedom of press, and he refused to enforce it. Because as president, he gets to judge himself whether or not a law is constitutional. Sure, the Supreme Court can make their decision, but it is the president who must preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution of the United States. When you think of George Bush II signing the obviously unconstitutional McCain-Feingold bill into law, he said as he signed it, well, it's probably unconstitutional, but that's for the Supreme Court to decide. That, my friend, is a third grade understanding of the Constitution of the United States and unworthy the statesmanship of any president. And yet this is what passes as thoughtful statesmanship.